The final form of kidney, also called metanephros, originates from two embryonic components. The first one is the ureteric bud, which is a branch of the mesonephric bud. I will use different colors for these two components. The second component being a population of mesoderma cells that surrounds the ureteric bud. It's called the metanephrogenic blastema. Blastema in embryology means a population of cells that will become something, differentiate in, into something. So this is the mesonephric uh, duct, the Wolfian duct also, which is uh, derived from the mesoderm. Its branch called the ureteric bud. And the population of the metanephric blastema, which is also which also comes from the mesoderm. This is the future pelvis of the kidney. The structures are growing. So the ureteric butt becomes longer. Uh, the pelvis is branching, forming the major calyces. And the population of the mesodermal blastema is also growing. So we got the pelvis, the major calyces as the branches of the pelvis, and the major calyces are branching into the minor calyces. So the typical structure of the branches of the kidney pelvis originates. And moreover, from the minor calyces, other microscopic tubules are proliferating. These will become the collecting tubules that you already perhaps know from the histology of kidney, right? Well, from the from the material of the uh, of the metanephric blastema, the nephrons are formed. So, including all their ducts. Bauman's capsules and ducts. Now the point is that these two microscopic tubules have to meet somewhere. So these are the minor calyces. As the branches of the major calyces, as is the pelvis, as is the major. Calyces. So the minor. And these proliferating uh, structures of the same origin, like the minor calyces, will become the collecting tubules of the kidney. Well, this will become the nephron.
nephrons. from the blastema. Uh, on a microscopic level we will see how these tubules will meet. So he, at first they will be blindly ending distal tubules of the nephron coming close to the collecting tubule This will be the collecting tubule. They need to meet each other. They will interchange some information molecules, some differentiation factors, etc. And finally, one collecting tubule will receive the distal tubules from a number of nephrons. So the colors suggest from which components these structures emerged. And finally, the typical structure of nephron is, is differentiating with the efferent arterioles supplying the loop of the glomerular capillaries the, with the efferent arteriole both become surrounded by the Baumann's capsule with its parietal layer and the visceral layer of podocytes that are embracing the endothelial cells of the capillaries. Uh, on the urinary pole, the proximal canal will be formed, then the proximal tubule will be formed then the thick segment and the thin segment of the loop of Henle entering the, the kidney medulla is the descending limb, limb, the ascending limb with its thin segment and thick segment and it comes back and becomes the distal tubule which comes close to the vascular pole of the of the renal corpuscle therefore becoming the macula densa a, an organ of chemoreception and then entering these one of these collecting tubules okay so this is not to illustrate the a detailed histology of kidney but just to demonstrate uh, with this color coding that the nephron from the embryological point of view drawn in green and red originates from the blasti from the metanephric blastema while the collecting duct originates from branching of the former ureteric butt. So let's label the structures. The afferent arteriole, the afferent arteriole of the glomerulus. Uh, then the Baumann's capsule with its two layers, the proximal tubule the loop of Henle
with its descending limb, ascending limb, thin segment and thick segment. This would be the medulla, this would be the cortex, with the distal tibule, the macula densa, and the collecting tibule. This junction needs to originate properly for the kidneys to, to work 